hired by Puff Corp to go and find the missing CEO. They last received transmissions on this island, but no one knows where they truly are or what has happened to them. It is my job to try and find them and even rescue them if possible, but that is not the hardest task. Yes, I have to find the missing CEO and his family, but I also have to try and survive myself on this deadly island. This island is known for its population of cannibals, and I have to try and make sure that I do not get eaten alive because I have a family to get back to myself. This is Sons of the Forest, and I spent a hundred days trying to survive and trying to rescue the CEO and his family. And it started off terribly. We were already going down. Day one starts with me coming to on the beach, unsure of where I am or what has fully just happened. Why were we shot down? We are hired by the people who own this island to come here and try and find the CEO and his family, yet we're shot down as if we're enemies. After fully coming through, I have a look round and I can see there's a lot of items on the beach, but there's also a member of my crew, so I have to help him out by the looks of it he's undergone some damage and he fully can't understand or hear what we are saying me and kelvin we go we go way back i call him the big k-dog and you know we do loads together we're always out with a you know the kids together playing football doing the stuff we love but now it pains me to see him like this not fully knowing what's going on and hopefully i can keep him alive for this 100 days with me so we can get him back home and safe so first thing is obviously first, we've got to let Kelvin know he needs to follow me. Otherwise, I am worried that he will stumble off somewhere and find himself lost in a hole. We then start looking through all the containers that are left on the beach for anything that is useful for us to survive. Obviously, our first port of call is to make sure we've got somewhere that we can stay warm, stay dry and get some sleep. We needed time to be able to assess the situation and find out where we are. And already we can see this island is not very welcoming. There's already people stuck to big poles with seagulls eating away at what's left of them. Things are not looking good. We decide to open up our bag and see that what we've got inside our emergency pack, hoping that this was gonna come in useful. And as you can see, we've got the essentials that we need, a guidebook, an ax, a lighter, and of course a GPS system. With our ax, we decide, you know what, Let's try and get a seagull so we can get some food on the go because me and Kelvin, the big K-Dog, are starving. But still, I have a banging headache after that crash and decide, you know what, let's take some pills. Hopefully that will sort us out and make us feel a bit stronger. We open up our GPS and we remember our simple task, to find the Puffton family. But we've also got to find the rest of our team. Are they alive? We do not know. Hopefully they are because we do not want to leave them behind. We pull out our handbook to have a look what our first step is going to be to make some shelter for me and Kelvin. So we decide let's get a fire going, but we want to make sure it's a nice secure fire where somewhere we can dry our socks and even cook our food. We place some stones around the fire and then we light it and get it ready. Once it's lit, I place down some meat for me and Kelvin 
I hope you like Seagull, because that's all we've got at the moment. I then placed down the tarp that we acquired, hoping that this was going to make an adequate shelter for at least the first few days. It's not quite the kin size bed I have at home, but it will do for now. We then decide it might be worth having another look round to make sure we haven't missed anything on the beach, because any item is useful. And whilst walking around, we decide let's head into the woods a little bit and see if any of our team is close by. If it weren't for the cannibals, this place would be beautiful. But look at this. We've got bodies hanging from trees. I mean, what's the need? But we do a small loop of the nearby woods, collecting what we can and seeing if we can find any of our team. But it all comes to no help, so we decide to have a quick walk down the beach to see if there's anything else we might need before we go back and call it a night. Whilst walking here, my mind does wonder, what could have happened to the Puffton family? Are they safe? Are they alive? Or am I going to find something I don't want to see? Day 2 starts out with a very nutritional breakfast, an energy bar and an energy drink. I would not recommend this, but you know what? You've got to do what you've got to do. We had a rubbish night's sleep, we slept on a freezing cold beach underneath a tarp. In the distance, we noticed some smoke and we're thinking, is this our team? Is this who we're looking for? So we head off, hoping to find some of Team B over there. Me and Kelvin make our way through the woods, picking a few flowers on the way, hoping to find something useful. That's when we spot something just in the distance. We walk over, we find some rope, some rag, a few skeletons, but also body parts that have been placed onto sticks. What is going on in this island? Things are looking weird. We decide to take them down, hoping that this will deter any of the cannibals coming near us. But this does also mean that they were very close. This was worrying, and we actually found one of their camps. But lucky for us, the camp was empty. We don't know where they are or what they're doing right now, but it's a perfect time for us to have a look around and see if there's any traces of Team B or the Puftons. We search for all their boxes, grabbing everything we can. Clearly, they've had some contact with some of our team because this is our stuff. We know what was brought to this island. These are our boxes and these are our stuff. Seeing how many body parts are just around here has me worried. How many people have come to this island and perished due to the cannibals? So we decide to have a look a little bit further and see the area where body parts have been used to make a chair. And obviously we had to take a seat and see if it was comfy, you know, I might wanna take it with me. But then in the distance, I see the cannibals returning home. Me and Kelvin only had one thought, to run and get out of there. But sadly, we both ran in different directions and Kelvin was left behind. I was really hoping he was going to be able to make his way back home. I pulled out my GPS because I did not know where I was. I was confused and I was lost. But I could hear the sea in the distance and I just made my way towards that because that's where we crashed and that's where we're calling home at the current moment. We made our way back to the beach, but there was no sign of Kelvin. Things weren't looking good, but I decided, what's going to bring Kelvin home? Like the smell of cooking seagull meat. So I chucked that meat on the fire, and I was hoping that the smell was going to bring him home, back to me, just so I know that he was safe. Whilst waiting, I decided it might not be a terrible idea to make our first weapon. Just in case the cannibal came looking for the stuff that we had stole from them. And then the best thing happened. Kelvin came running back. He was safe. He was alive and he told us that he almost got stabbed in the head by a cannibal. But lucky enough he didn't and we both sat by the fire and called it a night. Day 3 comes around and I decide it's a good idea to make myself a bow. You never know when the cannibals are going to come and I've got a feeling they're going to be here soon. Then obviously I had to make some arrows to go along with my bow. I couldn't be firing nothing. So I pretty much made as many as I could, just so I had a good chance of at least keeping them back. And I still wasn't too sure who shot down our helicopter on the first day. They had guns. I mean, we are not really going to be able to deal with them without some serious firepower. But we make a torch, just so we can at least see at night. Day 4, we wake up nice and early to Kelvin telling us that he saw something in the dark. We weren't too sure if this was a hallucination or if he's actually seen somebody near our camp. We decided to have a quick look around to see if there was anyone about before we reassured him that there was no one there and it was all within his head. 
As the morning got on, we decided to have a look at the cave that was near us. We decided, you never know, there might be something good in there, but also some of our team might have called that place home. But once we arrived, we could tell that no one had been there for quite a while. But either way, we made our way in, hoping to find something useful. As we entered, we could see a light in the distance. People had been here, but we just wasn't too sure when. We found some random stuff that we weren't too sure if we needed, as well as ammunition, flares, but also a laptop giving us the location for an entertainment bunker. Obviously, this was a bunker that was used by the Puffton family and the people that visited the island. We also found a piece of paper telling us about the Puftons buying this island. As it says on the paper, the location of the island is unknown and no one knows where it is, so we are rather lucky to be here searching for them. We decide to go a little bit further into the cave, hoping to find something useful, and so far all we've seen is creepy looking stuff as well as a lot of bones and a lot of bodies. We also found some mystery meat that we decided to take with us before even delving further into this cave. It was dark, it was scary and we weren't too sure what we were going to find, but we found some water with a rubber ring. What is going on in this cave? And then we saw as what can only be described as a demon. We tried to use fire to scare it away, hoping that would work, but it didn't and it followed us, so we decided just to run and get out of there as we were not prepared to deal with any of this and we needed to just get back home. We decided to exit the cave and try and figure out what is going on. Not only were the cannibals, as well as somebody shooting out our helicopter, but there was also demon looking creatures that we were not too sure if they are even real things. Was it all in my head or was that really there? But anyway, we decided it may be a good time to have a look around to try and find some of our team. We weren't going to do this alone and we needed help. I mean, as much as I love Kelvin, he just weren't all there. Something was going on with him and things weren't looking good. We made our way inland following the water before we actually ran into our first cannibals. These are weird, weird people. I'm not even sure if they are really human. But we felt like... The best thing to do would be to try and defend ourselves and show them that we are not here to be pushed over and we will fight back if we need to. We fired a couple arrows at them and showed them that we do not mess around and before you knew it, the first one was dead. Now we just had his friends to deal with. Thankfully, this was only a small camp and there was only three or four of them there so it wasn't too difficult to deal with. If it was any bigger, we would have struggled but lucky for us, Kelvin knew how to take a few hits from a cannibal before, you know, he just walked off like nothing happened. That man is a legend. We decided to loot their camp to find anything that was going to be of use of us. And obviously we want to make sure we grab everything and anything because you never know when it's going to come in useful. They you picked out a nice little spot and, you know, I'd love to stay there if it weren't for all the, you know, bodies and human parts and all that horrible stuff. Day 5, we're still out, we're still exploring, and we are looking for our team. We want to find more, we need to know what's going on. We can't be the only people on this island. But then we run into these weird crawling things, these are nothing like we've seen before. Are they cannibals, are they humans, or are they more demons? But we came across a digger, and it seemed to be a dig site. Clearly there had been a lot of people on this island at some point. But what has happened to them all? Has the cannibals took them all out? Lucky for us, there was a working golf cart and we were able to get into it and use that to traverse the land so much more easier. Walking was not going to be a problem for us anymore. Now we were able to drive around and cover big distances a lot better. But for some reason, Kelvin did not want to get in. He refused. He said he would only walk and he refused to even get in the golf cart with us. I don't see why. I mean, look at us. We're clearly very good drivers. I mean, yes, I crashed maybe every few seconds, but you know, it's part of the experience. I did end up running in to this big cannibal camp and actually end up hitting one. And uh, it was an awkward interaction, but we just drove away and made sure that we got far away quick enough because there were a lot of them and we were not ready to deal with them at all. We came upon our first tracker on the map and we wanted to know what it was. Was it one of our team? Were they letting us know that they were here? 
But again, we're getting jumped by cannibals. And now we found a good way to deal with them. Throw a lot of spears and let Kelvin take all the damage. But we did need to make sure that Kelvin survives. We need to get him home. Clearly something is going on with him. He's not the same old Kelvin that we all knew once before and loved. But we made easy work of this cannibal. And then we proceeded towards the tracker to see a rope with a bunch of alcohol. We cut the rope to see what was going to be at the bottom of it. Once we reached the bottom, we saw one of our team members. Things were not looking good. He had a torch on him and we took that, hoping that it was going to aid our journey even further. He didn't need it anymore, but still, it was horrible to see one of our team members and one of our friends dead. Day 5 was still exploring. We're looking for the rest of our team and we're hoping we're going to find them soon. But we ran into this weird looking woman with three legs. I don't know what is going on on this island, but things are not normal. Something weird is going on. It was getting late and we decided we needed to set up a fire and a small shelter so we could sleep the night away and wake up nice and early the next day and carry on with our journey. We were very close to that entertainment bunker that we had previously found and we wanted to see if there was anything useful in there that we could, you know, use to survive. So we cooked up the raw meat that we had and we spent the rest of the night by the fire just chilling before we called it a night. This was definitely Kelvin's favourite part of the day. When we woke up the next morning, it was nice and bright. You couldn't believe that we were on this abandoned island with a bunch of cannibals. Me and Kelvin looked after each other. We made sure to get some water and clean ourselves before we progress even further with our journey. So we hopped back on the golf cart and we carry on driving, hoping to find something useful. Maybe our team, maybe some people that can help us. Just something that will get us off this horrible island. But that is not what we find. We find some graves. Things are not looking good. We do stumble across this small cave. And with there, there is a note as well as a tracker. Clearly the workers on this island were not happy. They reported that people were turning up dead, surveyors going missing, and strange things happening. Even with that being all red flags, we decide to go into the cave anyway. Because we're just clearly stupid. We venture in to see what we can find, and lucky enough, it is not a big cave system, it's quite small, with just a few items inside. So we just loot up what we can, hoping to find something useful, before we make our way out and carry on. The smell in here was dreadful, as you can imagine, there's rotten organs, there's body parts, and it's all just been left there, in a horrible cave where bats have been eaten away at the dead. I mean, the amount of body parts lying around is just ridiculous, I mean... Can we at least just put them somewhere nice? We do end up coming across a blueprint. We're not really too sure what it is. It doesn't make a lot of sense to us right now, but hopefully it will in the future. But as we exit the cave, we see a helicopter. We're thinking this is it, we're saved. We grab a flare and we pop it, hoping that they're gonna see us and come rescue us. But sadly, it does not happen. They just fly away and leave us there on the ground, looking stupid. We try our best to hopefully follow them, but before you know it, they're gone, and there's no sign of them. We don't know where they've gone, we don't know how to get there, but we are frustrated, and we leave, and we carry on going even further, because we've just had enough at this point. But again, we spot another cave, and we decide to enter this one, hoping to find at least something, a sign of where our team is, or where the Puffton family is. But for some reason, every cave we enter, just feels horrible it's like there's people in there watching us you can hear crazy noises footsteps stuff you shouldn't be hearing lucky enough for us again this is just a dead end we don't have to go far we don't have to try and go against weird demons we're able to get in and get out before you know it we're back out on the road and we come across the entertainment bunker we were hoping that maybe one of our team members were held up in here hopefully waiting for us to come and find them. But sadly, that was not the case. Again, it was just down to horrible luck that there was no one in here. It appeared to be a cave, but as you went further, it actually opened up into some corridors and people had clearly been here. We found a lot of useful items, as well as a bed, a 3D printer, and a bunch of other stuff. But sadly, we couldn't have our fire torch going on because every time we did, it set off the sprinklers and it would put it out. 
I can't see you though, on the screen we could actually see the person that knocked us out in the beginning of the game. Is that the person that shot us down? We do not know. We also found a strange book. Why would that be here? Is this person relevant or is this book relevant? We were unsure. We decided to put some of the ink into the 3D printer and we wanted to have a look what we actually could make. We were unsure because a lot of these items made zero sense to us at this moment. But we decided to make a flask because that felt like it could be useful in the future. At this current moment, I was still just loving off energy drinks and that was not going to be useful. So we took the flask off the 3D printer and decided it may be worth it to explore a little bit further into the bunker. So we did that. There was a big bright light at the end. We're thinking, you know, is this, is this heaven? Are we dead? But luckily enough, no, it was just a very bright room. In there, there wasn't much, but we couldn't progress any further because we needed a key card to get through the door at the end. But still, it was worth a look and to grab anything that we did see. Clearly, there was a lot of people on this island at some point. And what had happened to all these people? Had they just left? Are they dead? Or are they all hidden somewhere that we just don't know? We decided to end the day by sleeping in the bunker and waking up nice and early the next day before 3D printing a mask, hoping that this may be of some use. And I can tell you now, it wasn't. We never actually used it, and I'm still unsure what it is used for. But anyway, we decided to make our way out of the bunker and carry on with the rest of our adventure. I wasn't sure where Kelvin was at this point and hopefully he's safe because I worry about him. You know, he's he's just a poor little bloke. But we make our way out, we head for a golf cart and we carry on. And we spot on our map there is another marker just out at sea. And we actually saw this when we were flying into the island and it was a life raft in the water. So we head that way, hoping to find out what it is and to see if it's maybe another member of our team. So we make our way to the beach and things are looking good. It's a nice area. You wouldn't even think this is a horrible island where people get eaten alive. Before we reach the edge of the beach, we hear some music just off to the side. So we go and have an explore. And whilst there we find another person. Another body with a lot of items that are very useful for us. So we pick up everything we can because we're going to use it at some point. So once we've grabbed all that and we grab the random explosives that we find, we head back towards the sea so we can go and find out what is in the life raft. My worry right now is sharks. I do not want to get eaten alive and at this point you never know what's going to happen. So we make our way to the life raft as quick as possible and we get up there. But sadly, we find our teammate dead. That is two members of our team now that we have found dead and it is not looking good. Team B was once a force to be reckoned with and now it's just me and Kelvin. We've still got one more member to find. Hopefully they're alive. We do take our team member's gun and we think, you know what, let's try and mess with this shark that's here. Let's show him. You cannot eat us. If you even try come for us, we're going to mess you up. So after a spear and a couple arrows in the back, it swims away and we jump back in the sea and swim as fast as we can back to the shore. I feel terrible leaving our teammate here, but there is just nothing we can do to save him. He is gone and the seagulls are going to eat what's left of him. We head back to our go-kart and we carry on driving, hoping to find what we are looking for. Maybe we'll find it this time, or maybe we'll keep finding all our team members dead. Things are just not looking good for us. Day 8, and we stumble across an abandoned campsite. Is somebody alive? Are people going to be around here? No. That would just be too lucky for us. Again, it's just random stuff all left around. Clearly, someone has been here and taken anything that could be of use. But my question is, where are the people? Are we going to find them? Are they going to be alive? No, they're hanging from trees upside down, dead. I feel like I must have broke a mirror before we went on this journey because everything is just bad luck at this point. Things have not gone our way. But we head back to the go-kart and we carry on going further. But this time we come across more dead bodies. I feel like at this point, everywhere we go, we are finding dead bodies. Dead people everywhere. 
but these people are all wearing the same robes. Is this a cult that I've stumbled across? Is this something, you know, weird? Is there a more sinister meaning to this island? We see that they're called Sons of the Stars. What does this mean? What meaning does this have for this island? Anyway, we return back. We're in one piece, but we just feel deflated knowing that at least two of our team members are now dead. But we get a fire going and we get some food on the go because we just need to chill and try and figure out our next plan. Luckily enough, with that new pot we found, we're able to take dirty water from the river and put it onto the fire and clean the water. This means we've now got clean drinking water instead of just drinking energy drinks. Whilst we did that, we noticed that the three-legged woman came up to us, but as, as we approached her, she got scared and she ran away. So we called it a night and went to sleep, but we got woken up by enemies nearby. It was very difficult to see. I could not see what was going on. The minute I pulled my torch out, I saw them stood there. They were attacking us and there was nothing we could do. My main concern was Kelvin. I didn't know where he was. I didn't know if he was safe. But all I had was a bunch of people trying to attack me. So I hopped on the golf cart hoping to drive away and make it out safely. But I thought, can I run them over just before and do a bit of damage? Is this a smart way to do it? But sadly, they managed to knock me out just before I was actually able to get away from anywhere. Looking back at this, I should have just left. I shouldn't have tried to stand and fight. Things were not going well. I managed to take two out, but they were just too strong for me. I woke up the next morning unable to breathe, not too sure what was going on. But lucky enough for me, I had my knife on me, I was able to cut the ropes and make my way to the surface. The cannibals had tied me underneath the sea, hoping to torture me and slowly kill me. Unlucky for them, I managed to survive and make my way out. I was ready to get revenge, but first things first, I had to make sure Kelvin was okay. But at this point, we were cold, we was wet, and we didn't fully know what was going on. We needed to make our way back and get a fire going so we could at least get warm. Once we lit the fire, we were still tired and decided to sleep the rest of the night until the early morning. Lucky enough, this time there was no enemies to try and attack us. We woke up, but we saw that they actually had left a few things for us. They had left body parts on sticks all around where we were living. These are weird, weird people. We decided the best thing to do would be to light a fire and burn the bodies. We didn't want them just lying around. We don't know what predators they would bring, but also we don't know if the cannibals would come back to try and retrieve the bodies of their fallen comrades. So once all the bodies were burned, we actually collected the bones from them as well as the skulls. They were going to come in useful in the future. With the bones we collected, we were actually able to make some sort of armour to try and protect us a bit better against anybody attacking us. And then we decided at this point, it may be smart to leave where we're staying and try and find somewhere new, as they knew where we were and things were just not safe. The next beach along was a big open area and it looked a lot safer than where we just were. Don't get me wrong, I am massively wrong with this, but still, at least we were safe just for one more night. Day 10, we make ourselves a rain collector. Next time it rains, we want to be able to collect the water so that we are able to drink it and actually stay alive. And then we need some logs. We need the wood to be able to build a nice safe area. So we get to chopping down some trees and collecting the logs from that. We chop down as many as we can before we get exhausted. It's a hard task chopping down all these trees as well as carrying all the logs back and forth. Lucky enough for us, we have our trusty axe that is making light work of this. With all the logs that we chopped, we have to chuck them down to the bottom of the hill and then we have to start transporting them from here to our new base location. But to make that easier, we decide to make a log sleg. With this, we're going to be able to take logs back and forth nice and easily. We then spot Kelvin and we go to talk to him, but already we've got visitors. More cannibals are after us. The founders and straight away they want to attack as revenge for us killing people of their tribe not so long ago. 
Lucky enough, this time we were ready and we were able to make light work of these people. With our trusty bow, we were able to get a couple of good shots and even a few headshots to make these people drop like flies. We weren't scared at this point. We were ready. We had enough. They kept attacking us and we did not want these people to cause any harm to us or Kelvin or to many any members of the team that were able to find alive. Once them people were dealt with, we grabbed our log sledge and we made our way to our new location. We chose next to these rocks to be a good position for us to build a nice log cabin. It was going to take a while because we needed a lot of material and Kelvin was trying but he was just very difficult to work with. But we pretty much unloaded all the logs that we had got so far into the log cabin and slowly started to build it up. We made good progress on this day but things were still going to take a while. We needed to build a fire to stay warm but also to make sure we can cook food make sure we can distill our water to make it nice and clean but not also that we needed the light as it got dark the weird three-legged woman came up to us again i ain't gonna lie i don't think she's a threat but she will not stay near us she keeps running away every time we decided to burn the bodies from the day before again we can use the bones but also we don't want the bodies lying around but Kelvin's some sort of freak because he decided to sit next to the burning bodies and just embrace it. But the rest of this day was just spent putting logs onto the sledge and taking them back to our log cabin. If we can call it a log cabin at this point, we barely had any of it built. But we needed storage. We had so many bones building up so we made a bone storage so we actually had somewhere to place them all because obviously we're going to use them in the future. And then we put all our logs onto our cabin hoping to make a big dent into the progress of it. And then we made a stick storage because we were building up on them as well. Day 11 and we decide to explore a little bit further in our surrounding area. We hope to find somewhere new and again we find more of these cultists. Clearly something dark has happened on this island and I just wasn't too sure what it was. But lucky enough for us they had a lot of ammunition with them and it's always useful to have. And then this time we found another campsite. I've got a feeling a lot of these that we find are all going to be empty and deserted. But as always, we took all the useful stuff and we carried on going even further. The next day we found an even bigger campsite, but this one, clearly something bad has happened. There was bodies, there was random stuff, there was even music playing. But of course, they always left the good stuff and this time they had left us an electric unicycle. So at least this time we had a new form of transport, but as we grabbed this stuff, more cannibals came looking. Clearly, they were waiting for us, so we grabbed everything we could and quickly got out of there. But it's my first time riding an electric unicycle, things were not going to go great, as you can imagine. So I had to scare away the people near me and then make sure I had enough room to at least try and make a dent in the big journey we've got back to our base. So I hop on it and we are ready to go. This thing is quick. I was not prepared for how quick it was going to be. People were running towards me. I was trying to stab them with my spear and we set off. But little did I know that I was going to make myself look like an absolute fool. Lucky enough we were okay and we were far enough away we were able to get back home and call it a day. We got back home, we lit a fire and we just chilled for the rest of the night. It took us all day to get back because it was such a long journey. Once the fire was lit, we were able to call it a night and get some well-deserved sleep. The next morning, we woke up and the cannibals had been around. This time they left us alone, but they did leave us a nice little treat. Why? Why can't they just leave me? We then built some rock storage. We were running out of room and we wanted to make sure we had a lot of stuff around our base ready to go. We then decided it was just too dark at night and we wanted to try and make some torches. Ones that were able to stand around and light up the place just so we could actually see what we were doing, where we were going and when we were attacked we actually had the ability to see our enemies. These torches came out quite nice but they don't really admit that much light and that's a bit of an issue. But, you know, it was going to work either way. The next 10 days were a big one. We decided to go back into this cave and this time we were going to fully explore it and see if we could deal with the weird 
demon creatures that were inside. We already knew this first part was safe. It was once we got to this part here, things were starting to look a bit creepy and we just weren't ready. I thought maybe there'll be one or two of these weird, hairless creatures. I was wrong. There were so many of them and it took us so long to get through here. But we sawed, we fought and we were ready, hoping to find maybe a team member in this cave or something that gave us the whereabouts of the Puston family. We decided to pull out the pistol that we had got from the dead team member, hoping that this was going to make the fight even easier, but I was wrong. These things took so many bullets and they just would not die. But weirdly enough, I could skin them and use their skin as armour as it was so strong, even stronger than the bone armour I have got right now. So I applied the creepy armour and I was hoping that this was going to give me that little bit of security I needed to make my way through. Everywhere I looked, there was bodies. There were people lying around, dead. I'm not too sure what went on in this cave, but it was definitely bad stuff. I mean, the size of these caves are massive, and I spent a lot of the time going very slow, making sure I grabbed everything I could, hence why it took so long. Once we got into the rhythm of killing these creatures, they were quite easy to deal with. A few spears, and they were dead. And then we pulled out a torch and tried fire, and fire made it even easier. These things did not like it. Bit of fire and they creamed in and we were looking very strong. We were able to skin all of these creatures and take their skins, hoping to even, you know, give fear in the face of all the cannibals. But either way, we carried on going through this cave, looking for more stuff. We were finding a lot of random stuff as well as these weird, I don't even know if they're babies or, or whatever they are. I did kind of feel bad killing them, but they attacked me. It was self-defense, is what I'm going to tell the courts when they review this footage and see that I've been killing babies. We saw some light towards the end and we weren't too sure what it was, and it appeared to be some sort of building. Was there some way I could make my way through there? Is that where the Puftons were? We were not in a situation to know, but we were able to find a taser. With this, we were able to obviously tase anybody we saw. What is that? That was my question when I saw the big Jabba the Hutt looking thing go past us. What is that weird looking thing? We carried on going further and we found a weird hut that led us down some rope even further into this cave. Unsure what we were going to find, we still made our way down this rope hoping that this would lead us to either our teammates or the Puftons. But again, it led us to neither it led to more cave, more people, more dead bodies, but this time it rewarded us with a blueprint. I was unsure what we were gonna do with that blueprint, but again, in the future, we may use it. At this point, we were tired, we were cold, we were hungry, we were thirsty. We wanted to find a way out, but things were getting weird. We found strange gold metal features as well as finding a weird sparking item on the floor. We decided to pick it up as we were unsure what it was. It didn't do much, but a few little sparks and we put the item away hoping it may be useful in the future. We find ourselves in some water and on the ledge we seem to find some items that may be useful. This time we found a rebreather. With that we were going to be able to breathe under the water as well as be able to see. This meant any travelling underwater were going to be a lot easier for us. So we dived into the water here to see what was underneath. We followed an underwater cave system hoping it was going to lead us somewhere new and maybe even to safety. But it just appeared to lead us out into the sea, out near where our base was. So clearly it just linked to an underground sort of cave. But that was okay. We were out, we were safe and we had some new useful items. So we got back home and we slept because we were exhausted. We woke up early the next morning, we lit the fire to get warm and we had a look at our surroundings. We noticed some strange noises. We were actually being attacked by the weird demons again. But this time we were ready. We were prepared and we knew we actually could face these. Yes, it was a little worrying that they knew where we were living. And things weren't looking good for us on this island so far. 
we put a bunch of arrows into them and then we beat them with fire hoping to kill them nice and quick they hit hard but we hit even harder we felt like we made quite easy work of these so once we had killed them both we skinned them and we took their skin for armor but this little cheeky one tried playing dead on us i thought i'd killed him but then he jumped back up and hit me with a quick one too but he don't know i'm quicker Knowing that it was not safe where we were, we wanted to make sure that we gathered as many logs as we could so we could at least build our log cabin. I wanted somewhere where we could sleep and remain safe. Hopefully the cabin was going to be it. With one of the logs that we had actually got, I decided to make some firewood. I thought it would be a good time to get our fires going even better. Kelvin definitely enjoyed this. He enjoyed the nice warm fire. Again, day 27, we're back chopping logs. We wanted to get as many as possible because we were going to need quite a lot to make sure we were able to build our log cabin. Day 28, we're getting attacked again. This just feels like the normal thing right now. If it ain't cannibals, it's weird demons. If not, it's, you know, we've just got people after it non-stop. For all they know, I just want to live a nice peaceful life on their island. But we made nice easy work of them and then, and then we burnt their bodies and I mean what is going on here? Them eyes were popping out their head. But we had that many bones now that we needed to build a second storage. But day 29 and we're carrying on putting logs onto the log cabin. We're making sure we try to get as much done as possible. Like I said we want somewhere safe to be able to live. And then we build some storage for our firewood because we had an abundance of it at this point. Then again, we had the weird three-legged woman come and approach us. She didn't stick around for long, because I think she saw us covered in bones and weird skin, covered in blood, fresh from battle. Clearly, she didn't know if we were friend or foe at this point. Day 30, we wake up, and we are in winter. Clearly, it has snowed through the night, and it was very cold lucky enough we had set up the firewood the day before because today was freezing and we were struggling to stay warm but nevertheless we still set out gathering logs trying to get our log cabin built because we needed some place to stay warm as well as somewhere where we could stay safe so again we were back and forth taking logs from the woods to the log cabin and placing them on we were getting quite close we were pretty much now at the roof part. Things were coming together and every day we were getting closer to feeling even safer. But don't get me wrong, we was not planning on settling down. Our main plan was to get off this island. But first we had a mission to complete and for that we needed to survive. So we grabbed some water from the river and carried on chopping down logs. And that was pretty much it for the rest of day 31. Chopping down logs and taking them back to our log cabin. As you can imagine what happens on the next day. We are attacked by cannibals once again. This just happens on the daily at this point. Things are getting out of control. Clearly, they had some beef with us and we weren't too sure why. Yes, we have killed many of them, but something was going on. The next day we woke up and we were determined to even get more logs. This time we wanted to get it finished. We were very close. We didn't have much left. All we had to do was build the roof and the door and that was us having somewhere safe, sound and warm to live. So we got to work building the rest of this log cabin, making sure everything was in order so we could finally move in and get somewhere safe. And just like that it was complete. We went inside and we placed down some torches, not only so it lit up but it also then stayed warm and then we placed down the bed so we at least had somewhere to sleep inside. We then made some shelves and dumped a lot of the stuff we had on us onto these shelves. We had so much stuff that we just didn't need it in our bags constantly. Day 34, the cannibals congratulated us by attacking us once again. They were clearly happy with our new log cabin and they wanted to check out if it could withstand an attack from themselves. And the short answer to that is yes. It could withstand an attack, so can we. We made light work of these and again... Even though they've got some weird ninja parkour moves, we can deal with them. But once again, we had a helicopter. This time, I was determined to try to get its attention. But again, it just ignored us. Clearly, they did not want to get us. Clearly, they had other stuff going on. 
were they just scouting? Were these the people that shot down our helicopter in the beginning? Who are they? And why do they keep ignoring us? We then also ran into the three-legged woman again. I don't know how she's not freezing, but each to their own. Early morning, day 35, and of course we are attacked. Cannibals are at it again. They will not leave us alone. At this point, something clearly is going on. Why did they feel the need to constantly attack us? I do not know, but of course we made sure to make light work of them before burning the bodies and getting some more sleep. We made some more bone armour because we were kind of weak after that last battle. We wanted to make sure that we at least were able to stay alive. And the bone armour did this for us. Obviously, it wasn't the strongest thing, but it also gave us an extra opportunity to stay alive. But then we made some more arrows because we were going through quite a lot and not always get them back. We then had one of the mutant babies come near our base and we wanted to make sure that we killed it nice and quick so we didn't have any more. The next 14 days were spent back in caves. We approached this cave wondering what was going to be inside. We found some people outside and we also took a slingshot off one of them. As we entered the cave we noticed that we actually didn't have what we needed to progress any further. I mean, I tried jumping, I tried everything I could trying to find a way to make it onto this rope. But we just didn't have the right tool. So this was something we would have to come back to later on. So we headed out the cave and went looking for another one. We were determined at this point that, you know, we have spent so many days on this island so far, we needed to figure out where the Puffton family are and where's the rest of our team. We made our way back to the entertainment bunker and we decided this was where we were going to sleep for the night as it was getting late, we needed food, we needed water but we also needed somewhere to sleep and this place was better than any other. So we called it a night, woke up early the next morning and got ready to go find another cave looking for the information that we needed. We soon stumbled across another cave, this time there was boxes outside so we had a look to see if there's anything useful in before we made our way into the cave. People seem to leave a lot of random stuff lying around and it's always seems to be C4. Oh and these bats scare me every single time they do anything in this game. But we make our way in and we see a lot of random meat, a lot of tins, loads of random blue, a lot of body parts but you know what, I mean what good cave doesn't have body parts? But anyway we go deeper. We found a lot of schools. I mean, this is a big warning sign, but not for me. We are ready to do the job that we need to do. So we grab any loot we see, and then we also notice there's just a lot of ammunition around. But we also find a cross. Is this going to be useful at some point? Hopefully. Hopefully it's going to be something we can use, but at this point we just weren't too sure what it was going to be used for. I was not a religious man, but after some of the stuff I've seen, Oli... I can describe it as the devil's work. We ran into more hairless fools. We were ready to make easy work of them because we just did not want to have to deal with these as well as the weird finger people and whatever else is going to be in this cave. We find a printed out email and it shows what they're looking for in these caves. It seems to be some weird ore. What use was this going to have? And then we also discovered this big weird Jabba the Hutt looking creature and we decided to blow it up with a sticky bomb. This felt great, there were body parts all over, but for once it wasn't us. But of course we ran into more hairless creatures, and these were on a rampage. But we beat them back with fire, hoping that this was going to scare them off, but it did not. These things were ready to fight till the death, they did not care. So after a long battle fighting many of them, we managed to kill a few before having to progress even further where there were more waiting for us. Seemed to be everywhere we looked, there was either random information, dead bodies, or these weird creatures after us. I definitely agree with this email that we found saying there needs to be more lightning in this place because it was very dark. It's impossible to see. I mean, even with our flame, or even with our torch, it's still difficult to see everything that's around. Once we make our way into here, we had to deal with a few more of these weird finger-bodied creeps. We also then found a weird gold box on the wall of a man sanded inside. Is this part of the cult? Is this something to do with, you know, what people are looking for on this island? I'm not too sure. But again, we run into even more weird things. The cross didn't seem to work. 
We tried to see if this would scare them away, but they just weren't bothered. It was like two people connected together. These things were very difficult to kill and they did a lot of damage. Either way, we still stood there and we beat them until they died. It's not very often you can say you beat two men at once, but you know, it's just what you've got to do. Luckily enough, once we killed them, we were able to skin them and take their creepy skin as armor. We're gonna be able to use that to even stay alive just a little bit longer. Once we dealt with the mutant babies that were there, we progressed further into the cave looking for more information or even something that was going to give us at least the location of some of the people. We then found another letter about another cave where people have been to and we asked, you know, he wanted his shovel back. Well, you're dead mate, so I'll be taking your shovel once we finally get to that cave. But as you would have guessed, we had more creatures to deal with. We had the weird hairless ones and the weird finger body ones. Well, I'm assuming they're fingers. I don't want to imagine they're anything else because that would make it very weird. But we did what we could to try and kill them all. We were very low on health at this point and all our armor was broken. So what we decided to do was set a fire, burn some of the bodies and also take the time to apply some of their creepy skin to try and just stay alive. Lucky enough we had some raw meat on us. We decided to throw that meat onto the fire and cook it. Once we had done that, we carried on going deeper into the caves, just looking for something, even a sign of the Puftons or the rest of our team. But everywhere we went, we just seemed to run into these weird creatures. We now had to deal with more mutant babies. I mean, how do you even get mutant babies in this situation? Are they actually babies? Are they just born from these mutants? Like, what is going on? We ran into more of these finger people. We made light work of this one with our axe this time and we decided let's see if it's easier without using the fire and then we came across the, the rope gun with this we're going to be able to make it across that rope and make our own zip lines this was good we now had what we needed to make it into the next cave but before that we had to get out of this one and we rode across this zip line here before falling down with one of these weird two people stuck together demons. I'm still unsure whether the demons, the mutants, the, the devils work. I don't know. There's no easy explanation because no one's really just, you know, has put like a sticky note on them saying these is what these are. But finally, after many, many days, we found our way out and we felt safe at last. All we wanted to do at this point was get home, get a nice fire going and get some good sleep because we were exhausted. But before that, obviously, we had to get the fire going. But overall, I would say we had quite a successful few days in that cave. But we got that fire going, and then we got ourselves into bed, ready for even more adventuring. The next morning, obviously, we were awoken again by cannibals trying to murder us. I don't know what their problem is with me. I'm just a nice bloke here, you know, just trying to find some people, trying to do fun stuff. I'm not about trying to murder people or, you know, hurt anyone. I mean, I would never do that. I mean, I don't even hurt animals. I'm a vegan. Like, don't they know this? But anyway, things were not looking good for us. We had no armor, barely any health, running out of food, running out of water. And, you know, we just kept getting attacked. So what we needed to do, we needed to speed things up because we are halfway through our journey so far and we have still not found even a trace of the Puston family and we were still missing one team member as you can see we had another helicopter come and this time they they definitely saw us threw down a flare and they literally stopped above us but still they decided no he ain't worth it and then we got attacked again i'm just trying to get some water and they're coming for me obviously as you know this is all stream live and a couple of people in my chat well, you know, nice enough to tell me where I had actually put my base is right close to a cannibal camp and to a uh, mutant camp, hence why I was getting attacked by both quite regularly. So the best advice would be to move. So I kept that in mind, but that was not my mission right now. I could deal with these attacks, but I had a very important mission to deal with. But we dealt with the cannibals that were attacking us. We finished up there, we grabbed the water that we needed, and then we were ready to call it a day. You know, things were getting tiring, it's hard work dealing with all these cannibals on a daily basis. 
Day 52, we decided to mess around by making some Molotovs. We thought, you know what, these might come in handy in the future. You never know what you're going to be faced with. And fire seems to be very, very strong against all types of enemies in this game. But I needed some more arrows, but I also decided to make some flame arrows. So we made them just by throwing a Molotov on top, which is a bit baffling. But hey, if it works, it works. Day 53, we're back out, we're exploring even more, and today we wanted to see if there was anything near our base that would explain the constant attacks. Is there a way for us to prevent that? Are we able to find these camps that continuously come and attack us? Whilst driving about, we came upon somebody popping a flare. Was it the other member of my team? Sadly, no. It was a man that died the minute we got near him. Which was obviously a bit strange, but hey, he left us some juicy stuff. We then accidentally stumbled across another cannibal camp. This is probably the one that's been attacking us non-stop. So we decided what we'll do is just drive through them and ignore them. If we just ignore them, you know, they might leave us alone. Obviously we know that's not the case because they never want to leave us alone. They're constantly on us. But we, we dealt with them, we grabbed all their loot before running away and grabbing a glider that was just near their base. This is the first time I've seen this sort of like vehicle in the game, so I was, you know, I was quite confused what it was doing there. So we decided to jump off the cliff and give it a go. And whilst gliding down, we actually saw two small boats. We don't know how they got there, how long they've been there or what's gonna be on board, but it felt like a good place to go down and have a little bit of an exploration. At first I struggled to get on top, of the boat, I mean, the ladders don't work, so I had to try and parkour it, but once I got on, I decided to head into the boat to explore. There was an okay amount of loot inside, nothing crazy, but we found our first camera footage, and we was actually able to have a look and see the arrival of the cultists. So that meant we were actually able to see, you know, them coming to the island, and them thinking, you know, they were gonna find whatever they were looking for. I'm still unsure what they were expecting to find, but one thing we did find was actually a map with an X showing us where Puffton would be. So maybe he's still there, or maybe he's gone. We don't know yet. But as it was getting late, we were very tired, we needed to sleep. So we put down a little shelter and called it a night. The next morning, it was nice and bright, but obviously the cannibals came and left us a warning. But we ignored that and we went on to the other boat. We wanted to have a look if there was anything else on this one. And again, it wasn't much, but this time it actually showed that they knew that the CEO was missing. Clearly, they either knew about it or had a part in it. But we found a note about them wanting to blow it up. Before we collected some pajamas, and that was about it on this boat, there wasn't really too much, you know, loot, nothing crazy. There just seems to be a lot of dead cultists. I mean, if you want to, you know, recruit people to your cult, stop trying to kill each other. I mean, that would make loads of sense to me. But anyway, we carried on exploring and started heading back towards where our base is. We found some random loot on the way before we made our way to another cannibal camp. This time, we weren't ignoring it. This is probably the camp that's been causing me loads of problems. So we decided we're going to take it out and we're going to deal with the people in this camp. Unlucky for them, at this point, I was pretty much an expert in bow combat, spear combat, and how to deal with cannibals. I was hitting headshots like I was a member of FaZe. After 54 days on this island, I have learnt the ways, and I've also learnt how to deal with these cannibals really easily. So once I dealt with all them, I noticed they actually had a mutant tied up. And, you know, what better thing to do than a bit of target practice? But obviously, when I ran out of arrows... I decided it was time to get up close and personal. But we made, again, light work of it before we skinned it and took its skin. You can never have too much armour in this game, especially with some of the mutants and demons and people that come and hit you and knock multiple armour off in one hit. Again, we stumbled across a person with a flare. Clearly, there were multiple people on this island that were struggling, trying to find help, and they saw them helicopters too, and it wasn't just me. But this time... I found myself a new weapon. It wasn't the best, but it was very quick, and it was easy enough to kill animals. Day 55, and we're being attacked again. You know, we're back. One night, well not even a night in our log cabin, and we're already being attacked. We gave the Kukri a go, and it's good against cannibals, but against these mutants, it's not the best. I would still prefer my spear. But either way, we killed them all, skinned them, and we got on with the rest of our day. After waking up a few hours later, 
I decided I need to get out of my camp. Every time I was there, it was constant attacks. There was constantly death around me. And you know what? I needed some space away from it all. So I went out into the woods and did a bit of exploring. I wanted to clear my head. But again, I spotted red smoke. I feel like this is such like a continuous thing right now. It's multiple times a day I'm spotting red smoke. And every time I go there, the person with the flare dies. Which is sad, I know. But we got ourselves a new axe. That's the main thing. We've now got a big boy axe. This was going to make killing some of the big ones so much more easier. We then also found another note, and I believe that is about myself. So knowing that these people knew about my existence on the island, maybe these are the ones that shot down the helicopter, but I guess we'll never know. The next few days were spent in another cave. This was a big boy cave, so obviously we have to make sure we go down and do some good exploration to make sure we pick everything up. Now I'm joking, this one was tiny. These are the ones I like, where there's like, you know, a little bit of loot at the bottom. You go down, you haven't got any weird things to deal with. So we grabbed everything we needed and we made our way out. Obviously, you've always got to grab as much loot as possible because, you know, we're loot goblins. It's just what we do. But we headed back to the cave that we couldn't get any further in last time, but now we could use the zip line and make our way across. So we did just that. We ziplined across, we fell down, and we had a look before going into the water. We found another one of these people, but this time they had a lot of painkillers, energy drinks, and tape. Again, all very useful stuff. But we headed into the water and went down into an underwater cave to see what we could find. At this point, we were just really hoping this was going to lead at least to some whereabouts of the Puftons. We still don't know if they're alive or if they are dead. And we are still missing one team member. Hopefully he's alive because it would be nice for more than just Kelvin to have survived. But obviously the minute we got into this area, we ran into more mutants. Yes, we found a wetsuit, that's all great, but we had these to deal with. And these hairless freaks are just awkward and annoying and do so much damage. But lucky enough, once they do their attack, they need about 10 seconds to go chill before they come attack you again. We had about three or four of them to deal with before we could progress any further, but once we dealt with all them, it was pretty much plain sailing for a while. That was until we had to slip down this watery slide in the cave, and, you know, we didn't know where we were going or what was going on, but lucky enough we landed in water. I mean, it could have been worse, we could have landed on some rocks and broke our back. Again, we found more loot. This time, it was quite a lot of explosives, as well as ammunition, so I don't know if this was warning me that something was coming up, or I needed to be prepared for the next part. But I grabbed what I could and proceeded even further, and this time I decided to give a grenade a go, and see what sort of damage it could do. Lucky enough for me, I've got a perfect throw, and I managed to actually deal with a few of the mutants with the grenades. At least with this part, there was only a few of them left. And that means I could throw the grenade down, run away, and they would, didn't really seem to like to follow me into this part. Or if they did, they'd run, hit me once, and then run back. So I cheesed it in a way, but maybe they were just worried that there was something on this side that they couldn't see. Or they just clearly knew that I'm an absolute demon with this bow. But obviously, once the arrows ran out, I had to get close and personal with my spear and put an end to all their lives. At this point, I felt like they were never going to stop coming. There was just so many of them. But lucky enough, like I said, I'm a master with this. Once we had finally finished one of the hairless ones, I decided, you know what, enough was enough. Let me just pull out my pistol and start firing. I felt like an American police officer any time someone in America even coughs. One weird noise and I was firing off 20 rounds into the body of someone that didn't deserve it. But either way, we had a few of these finger face people coming after me. But again, they were not really too difficult to kill. And once we killed them, we were able to skin them and then take their skin as armor, which is very useful. We then were able to give our new big axe a go. And you know what? It makes light work of these. And then we came across, I, I don't even know how you would explain it. It's like four people stuck together upside down. It's a very, very weird thing. But we, uh, we, we threw a bomb at it and it... You know, it was still standing, so clearly we needed some bigger firepower. So we pulled out the pistol and we started firing. This thing took a ridiculous amount of damage. I was firing, I threw spears, I was using my bow. No matter what I used, it just didn't seem to be enough. But we finally got it down and we still had one more to deal with. And this one hadn't been blown up at this point. So we have to start pulling out the fire arrows. This helped a bit, but still a very, very long fight. 
I mean, it was at least five minutes of just firing arrows, collecting them, firing arrows, collecting them, back and forth. But finally, we managed to finish it off. We managed to pull out the big axe, and, and with a few big swings, we managed to kill it. But we also noticed there was a laptop with another location, and it gave us the location for the maintenance bunker. We then came to the end, and we found more water, so obviously we had to swim through and see what was at the end of this. So we jumped straight into the water and dove down, hoping to find something useful. The first thing we found was just a case with some grenades in. So, of course, we're going to grab them as well as the money because they are good to be placing on fires. And you never know when I'm going to need money when I leave the island. But we grab all that and head back in the water before coming out to more hairless freaks. I mean, look how many there is. But this time we were smart. We ran past, threw a couple of grenades and blew them all up. And this time it worked better than the last. I mean, they went from being big finger face creeps to literally being blobs of meat on the floor. This thing was incredible. Now that's the sort of firepower that you need. As we progressed further, we saw a light in the distance. We was a bit unsure what this was, but again, there was mutant babies to deal with. So quickly I had to murder a few babies before we could see what the light was. As we got closer, we could see the body of a person. And what was he holding? He was holding the shovel. I mean, so clearly, we went all this way just to find a shovel. Was this actually going to be useful? Have we got a use for this shovel? I suppose we'll find out in the future. But I don't know what we've found. Something isn't right. Something is weird. We then came across another jab of the hut looking thing. I still don't know what this is. But nothing like a bit of explosives to deal with it. So we made our way through the hole that we just made by blowing up the big jab of the hut and that pretty much led us to the exit of this cave but obviously it wasn't going to be as simple as that we had a few mutant babies to deal with before we could just leave and obviously we had to make sure that they knew that we ran this place this wasn't a daycare you weren't able to just lie around not doing out you were ready to be murdered but i understand it does sound sound kind of bad when i keep saying we're murdering babies we're not murdering like actual babies they're mutant babies so like not really babies but anyway when we left this cave we noticed it was dark it was late and we needed some sleep so we decided let's just make a small shelter here and call it a night but obviously we weren't going to be left alone we were woken up by cannibals they're just i don't know what it is about me they just love me they're tracking me through my luscious scent there's got to be a way that they keep finding me but we had a few of them to deal with we murdered them, we chopped off the body parts, and then we were able to go back to sleep. But, I mean, look at this. This axe is so good. I mean, when they're quicker than you, yeah, they're going to hit you first, but still, this axe will just chop off body parts and organs and do crazy shit. But once we had dealt with all these stupid cannibals, we were able to get up and go. And Kelvin has actually made the journey to come find us. Sadly for him, we were getting in the go-kart and, uh, and we were off. We weren't, you know, we weren't hanging around. But we managed to get the go-kart stuck, and I don't know how we was going to get it out. And it was a worrying time, but luckily enough, we were able to push it just up a little bit, but it still got stuck. So we made our way through, and we found another cannibal camp, and this one was empty. So I had a feeling that maybe the people that were here were the ones that we just killed. So we did the respectful thing, and we looted it all and took everything. We grabbed what we could and then we left. But we did have a couple to deal with on the way out. But again, light work. We're just, we're pretty strong now. And once we dealt with him, we decided it would be a good idea to get some high ground and use our glider to glide all the way back to our base. And lucky enough for us, it worked out quite well. We were pretty much able to jump off the hill and glide all the way to where we wanted to go. And obviously we skimmed the top of the trees, it was a little bit, you know, worrying at one point, but we were able to make it and not end up dying. So we set out gliding towards our base, but on the way there we noticed that the maintenance bunker that we found the location to was the place that we'd been before, where we found the diggers. So we decided it'd be a good idea to dig here and have a look what's inside the maintenance bunker. So once we dug up the entrance hatch, we were able to gain access. So we made our way in, we opened up the door that felt like it hadn't been opened in such a long time. We climbed down the ladder into the maintenance bunker to see what we could find. And obviously the first thing we see is a dead body on the floor, so things are not looking too great. But we venture further, we make sure to grab anything that we might need before we find a room. 
this room looks quite nice and I'm not gonna lie this would be a good place to stay you've got a nice comfy bed you know we've actually found the maintenance key card we've got a 3d printer we've got everything we could need after grabbing the key card we grabbed a few weapon mods before we grabbed some paperwork to see that one of Puffton's paintings was actually stolen and then we actually found the location for the food bunker that thing sounds nice I mean you know that's where I want to be going but we managed to find some crunchy wunches in the bunker we took them before we called it a night in the nice comfy bed but sadly it said enemies were nearby and of course there was the baby mutants crawling near us we then investigated the bathroom and found a nice tuxedo before we picked up another book there seems to be a lot of these books that sort of make zero sense to me i don't know the full purpose of picking up these books but we pick them up nonetheless we found another room that was full of more mutant babies but once we dealt with them we were able to find actually a new axe we were able to find the firefighter axe and this thing was a lot better than the other axe that we had found and this became sort of my primary weapon when we left the bunker it was very early in the morning it was still dark but we decided to press on and make our way back to our base we didn't want to lose any time in the day we just wanted to make sure we could get back and carry on with our necessary stuff like I keep saying, this island is beautiful, and if it weren't for all the cannibals and the weird mutants, this place would be amazing. We return back to our base, and we decide it would be a good time to start a fire. Obviously, we need stuff to cook, we need to get water cleaned, we also need to stay nice and warm, and we also need to see. And we know Kelvin loves nothing more than a nice warm fire to sit by. So we get the firewood on the fire, then we're able to get some water on there to clean it. And then once the water was done, we were actually able to get some meat on there, hoping that would draw Kelvin home. Sometimes he would just go out on his own and end up getting lost for a couple of days. I mean, I did worry about him, but he somehow survived this long. I reckon he's got another 28 days in him. The next day, we decide it might be worth it to build a bigger log sled, because at this point, I had not much to do base-wise and we decided we're not in the best location, it might be worth it moving. So we decided to gather as much logs as we can, make the new sledge and hopefully it was going to make life a little bit easier for us. So we spent the day gathering logs and we took them back to our base. The next morning we are cracking on with building the sledge. We need sticks, we need logs, we need tape, schools and rag. All very basic things and for us lucky enough we had enough of everything. We just had to run back and forth filling up on sticks, which is fine. And whilst building this, I noticed another mutant in the background. So obviously we had to go and deal with that. These attacks were getting more and more and they were getting very annoying at this point. It was at a point where we couldn't even relax. We constantly had mutants or cannibals coming to attack us. Because once the mutants were done, cannibals were straight onto us. It was non-stop. I don't know if they were working together or decided just to attack at the same time. Obviously, we have to show them who's boss. We're not messing around. You can't come and attack me and think you're getting away with it. Well, I mean, one did get away with it. This one decided to run, and he was like Usain Bolt. He was gone. I literally could not keep up with him, and he disappeared. So he managed to make his way back to his camp, alive, barely. But next minute, we had the three-legged woman dancing for us, and... Um, it was strange, but I admired it, and, you know, she's got the confidence to come and do it. She's now no longer scared of us. The next day, day 75, we're three quarters of the way there, and we wake up to another attack. I mean, they just won't leave us alone. It's getting so annoying, but again, easy work. We take down the mutant, and we skin him, before we head off to go get some more logs with our new sledge. This thing was loads better. It held an extra four as well as holding 28 rocks. But we weren't looking for rocks at this point. We were just looking for logs. So this is pretty much what we spent the day doing. Getting logs and transporting them back to our base. The next day I decided to hop on the unicycle and head over to this area over here. I decided this might be a better place for our new base. It's a nice open area, and with the logs, we're able to actually build sort of our own thing. I built a rain catcher just in case it rains, and lucky enough it did, and then I decided it might just be worth it building up high to get away from the actual cannibals and the mutants. So hopefully, if we're up high, they'll just leave us alone. But this was going to take a lot of work, and I still had a team member to find, as well as the Puffton family. So I put Kelvin to work, chopping down the logs whilst I did all the building. 
we took over our old logs that we had previously chopped down and brought them over to the new area. But we decided to build a nice up high platform with some rope so we were actually able to get up there. We were sort of hoping this was going to be perfect to prevent any attacks. And obviously it never worked out. I mean we ran out of time before we could actually build the base we wanted to build but that's okay. But we got to the top and as you can see we're nice up and high and we are safe. So we decide it might be worth building another log cabin just up there as well with it. And we decide to put Kelvin to work chopping down the logs but also finishing the building because we had other stuff to do. We couldn't wait around for this to be built. So we told Kelvin finish the structure we are going on an adventure you've got to stay here this is your one job you've got this. The next four days are spent more exploring. We come across a cave, obviously we've got to go in and see what we can find. Obviously when we go in, there's mutants. There's always gonna be, they just don't leave us alone. But we deal with these nice and quick. We're not messing around. We know we're not hoping that they just die of old age. We've got to get in there with our weapons and put them to an early grave. We then enter another cave, but this time it is the food bunker. So we're able to get in there and find the bunker door and find hopefully some yummy food. I ain't gonna lie, I don't know what I'm missing the most. It's probably like burgers or something, you know, on the island it's just seagull and fruits and, you know, leftover food I'm finding from, you know, dead people. But either way, we enter the bunker hoping to find something good and we find bacon bites. I mean, I don't even know what they are, but I don't know what it is about food in cube shapes. It just makes it 10 times better. You can give me anything in cube shapes, it makes it amazing. But we use our key card that we got to enter even further, hoping to find something good. There was a lot of stuff growing, but there was also a lot of mutant babies. And at this point, I just had enough. My conscience was feeling bad for killing all these babies. But we found ourselves a crossbow, and this was going to turn out to be the best ranged weapon we had got so far. I mean, all it took was four bolts to get rid of these weird finger people, and that was nice and quick. So we dealt with him, we skinned him, we took his armour and we progressed even further but this part was going to be underwater. Lucky enough for us though that meant there was going to be no threats because I don't think the demons liked water either. None of the mutants or the cannibals really entered water. But we could see a door at the end and that was giving us some hope. But there was also another door to the left so we decided to enter there first and have a look what there was. And this is where we found another note telling us about boats that have been seen on the island. I feel, I feel like they're the, maybe the two that we saw before, so there's clearly some more. And then we found a VIP keycard as well as a location for the residential bunker. But as we can see on the screen, something weird was happening. Clearly, this was showing us what actually happened to Pufton and his wife. I mean, were they turning into these weird creatures? Was it them all along? What is going on? But we decided to put our new attachments onto our weapons before heading into the next room. We didn't know what was awaiting us, but what I saw on them screens, I was worried. We used our key card to open the door, and things weren't looking good. We made a dash over to the table, hoping to not be seen. All we could see was a few people over by the windows. But something grabbed them and pulled them into the water, and we weren't too sure what was going on at this point. Clearly there was something scary going on here. As you can see, there's Mr. Pufton and his wife. I'm not too sure what was going on, but things were getting weird, and they were ready to try and fight. I did my best to survive, but at least I can say I found at least Mr. and Mrs. Pufton. So unsure where the daughter is, but I weren't gonna, you know, have time to think about that right now. I had to try and survive. I did my best by running around, firing my crossbow, firing my pistol, anything I could to try and survive but things just were not looking good. We were low on health, we were weak, we had no armour, and it weren't long before we were getting hit, and we ended up getting knocked out. Lucky enough for us, they didn't kill us. They placed us in this weird sack, potentially hoping to change us into one of them. But we managed to escape, grab our stuff and make our way back because we were not finished just yet. We wanted to get back there and put an end to what is going on. So 
we went up to the door and started firing a crossbow at anyone that we saw, hoping to kill them nice and quick. And of course Mr Puffton again came, trying to put an end to us. But we're too quick now, we know what's going on, we know their attacks, and before long Mr Puffton was down, and all we had to deal with was with his wife. So we found both of them, and obviously we did the right thing, and we teabagged him. We then saw the name cards on the table, and that proper set home that we had actually found them finally, and these were the people that we had been looking for. Over 80 days on this island, and there they were. But we had to get out of here, so we went into the water, and we left the same way the bloke before did, hoping to find a way out and hoping to get home safely to Kelvin. Obviously we want to make sure he's okay, we worry about him, he's our boy. But we swim through and we find a way out of the water and we carry on going even further and lucky enough we do find an exit that gets us out of this cave. Once we exit, we still see it's daytime so we've got a bit of time so we can get back home and make sure Kelvin's okay and sort of see the progress he's made and he's done quite well. Day 86 and we're out exploring. We see a weird marker on the map and we want to go check it out and see what it is. Obviously on the way we explore anything we find and we found another campsite with a dead person there. We hear a bit of music so obviously we have a little dance before we turn it off and grab everything we can. We obviously want to grab all the loot we can because we're just greedy loot goblins. But lucky enough for us we keep finding a lot of ammunition and that's always good because you never know when we're going to need to pull out the pistol and start blasting. And then we made our way onto the beach to find even more loot. It looked like at some point people did have a fun time on this island. I mean there's the canoes, there's an entertainment bunker, I mean there is more than most people ever have. On the way to this next marker we had more cannibals and we got knocked off our unicycle but with our trusty crossbow we were able to make light work of these. We also even put our big new axe to use, chopping up a lot of these cannibals. I mean, to decapitate them was so easy. To be fair, this is probably the biggest swarm of them that we've ever came across. There were so many of them, I wasn't expecting this many. But then we had this weird double-ended, I don't know, even know what it is, slinky looking person come after me. This is a weird thing, but we just threw Molotovs and hoped he died nice and quick. Not a clue what this thing was but it was weird. But with a few chops, it died nice and quick and we were able to skin it. Now once obviously we skinned it and took its skin and made it armor, we found our way to this grave. We decided to dig it up to see what was inside. Sadly, it was not what we were looking for. We've managed to find all the members of Team B and each one has died. But we managed to take the shotgun off his body, make it back home and call it a night. Day 87 we decided to have a look at the paper we found with the map and decide we were going to head over there and try and find where Puffton's home is. Hopefully that would give us the answers that we need. So we set out on a golf cart hoping to find some answers. So far the only thing I was finding was a concussion after I got knocked out the golf cart by a giant fuck off moose. I mean what was the point? There was just no need for that. But then we found our way onto a golf course and actually found a golf club that we could pick up and use. And then we just saw in the distance a helicopter taking off. We ran over there to see if it was anything useful or at least there was going to be some people that was alive. Sadly it was the same old story. We get there and all the people are dead. And then we find some paperwork to tell us that Timmy LeBlanc is on the island, the kid with the mutant arm. Things were going to get weird. But anyway, we carried on looking and then we found another video. This time it was proof of some dodgy stuff that was going on on the island. It turns out some of the men on the island were the ones that were killing the cultists. And that's probably why they wanted to blow up Puffton. They probably blamed him for what had happened. Then we saw this email and Mr Puffton actually did not condone the violence that was happening. But anyway, that night we found another cave and we decided to have a look what was inside. It took us quite far down into this cave to actually get to the bottom. And once we were in we were unsure what we were going to find. And once again I got scared by the bats. But we were back to more underwater swimming hoping to find the way in this cave and the right way to go. So far there was no mutants and it actually seemed quite nice. For once I was able to make my way through a cave without being attacked left right and centre. But we kept exploring, hoping to find something useful. We found another blueprint, but I wasn't too sure what it was for. 
but we needed to head further deeper. So we went on the rope and headed to the bottom, and we came through this weird place with a bunch of crosses, and it was very, very scary going through here. We don't know what we was going to find, but something seemed very off. But again, we found another rope, and we made our way down. And once we got to the bottom, we found ourselves in another room with a bunch of gold metal things coming out the wall, as well as another piece of random metal with lightning coming out of it. What is going on? What are we finding? What is all this for? And what really is going on in this island? As we carried on going further, we actually found a pickaxe. And with this pickaxe, we actually could mine the ore that the people came to the island to find. What did this ore actually do? What properties did it hold that made people come all this way just to find it? Day 89 and we're finally leaving that cave. We get out and it's a nice beautiful day, but we still have a lot more exploration to do. But as I left, I got jumped by a bunch of these weird, skinny, dobby looking things. And we decide, are these the ones that we can use the cross against? And we were right. We pulled the cross out and it set them on fire and they did not enjoy that at all. These were clearly something from the devil. But as we explored further, we ended up finding this, these random abandoned buildings. Obviously we wanted to see what was inside, but we also wanted to stay safe. So we had a quick look around, but there wasn't really too much. There was another blueprint, but again, it wasn't really for much. And, and I still don't even know what it's for. Either way, we carried on going and then we saw red smoke again. We keep finding this red smoke. This time I was praying for something useful, but again, there wasn't much. It was an abandoned building and some ammo with him. So we left him alone and carried on going further. And this time we came across another dig site. There was a bunch of stuff there, but nothing really that useful. But we did find more of that ore in the ground. And this clearly was a dig site for finding this ore. We was now on to the final 10 days. We came across another weird underground building. We ventured inside, worried what we were going to find, but lucky enough it wasn't much. Clearly it was just used for storage or maybe the start of a mine and nothing really got done inside. We did find another blueprint, but again it's just something we're not going to use. We left this and carried on exploring even further. And then we stumbled across another cave. We kept finding these left, right and centre, but this one wanted us to go down some rope even further. And this time again, clearly people have built stuff underneath. This was some sort of mine that hadn't been used in quite a while. So we went further and found that there was a bunch of ore that we could mine. So we grabbed what we could because we could only carry 20 at most. And once we grabbed all this, we made our way back out because there was nothing else for us in this cave. Once we got out, it was dark, but we decided we still needed to find somewhere to stay the night. We also wanted to explore a bit more. And we was near the residential bunker, so we decided to go there and saw there was already a crashed helicopter, as well as some camouflaged clothing. We made our way towards the bunker, going through this cave area, before heading down into a small hole in the ground. At this point, we had sort of realised we messed up. We made our way into the residential bunker, thinking that everything was going to go well. But when we got to the door, we realised we didn't actually have the right keycard. And we'd made this journey, and it was completely pointless we didn't have access to actually get inside. But we needed to get inside as it was vital to get into the VIP bunker. But we decided, you know what, we will sleep here and we'll make our way to where we need to go. We exited the bunker on day 91 and carried on with our journey. Obviously we hop on the golf cart and we get on our way. Whilst travelling, we come across another cave just near the water and we decide it'd be a good time to enter it, hoping to find something useful inside of here. This might have been the strangest cave that I've entered during this 100 days. Things got really weird inside of here. But anyway, we find another weird drawing on the wall. Another gold box. What could it mean? We have no idea. Either way, we come across some of these weird hairless people again this time we've got a shotgun and it makes light work of them. A couple of shots and they are done. I felt like the Terminator at this point. Things was going great. Don't get me wrong, I was sad about finding my teammate dead, but at least he left me a shotgun that I could easily kill these with. And of course we have to go back underwater, trying to find a way through this cave. I do kind of wish these caves had a, you know, a bit of a different design. Maybe not every cave you need to go underwater and then walk through the darkness for ages. But anyway, 
we came across a rifle this time. This now means we've at least got a long range solution because we've now got a shotgun, a pistol and a rifle. If we collect any more, we could open up our own gun store once we got back. But anyway, we carried on going even further and we came across more of this gold metal sort of thing. But this time, it looked more like, like an actual like building. Either way, there was obviously more of these naked, hairless freaks that we had to deal with before we could explore even further. But I was still, you know, confused. Is this what the cultists were on the island for? Is this what they were looking for? All this weird stuff going on? What does it all mean? But anyway, I found myself sliding down a slope again, heading towards potentially my death, but lucky enough, we survive. But obviously, we are seeing more of this gold building going on, we still just don't know what it is. And then obviously we run into one of these big weird things again. I just, like, what is it? What is this big fucker? This is the biggest thing we've caught so far. I could not tell you what it is. And we threw as much fire as possible, hoping to kill it nice and quick before it took too much of our health. Lucky enough, we didn't have too many of things to deal with at this point. It was just this big one and a couple others. But the crossbow makes light work of everything. This crossbow is unbelievable. But anyway, we carry on even further into this cave. We need to know what's going on. There's a lot of gold work going on. There's big creatures we've not seen before. Something weird is definitely going on in this cave. But after we head down, we find what seems to be a, a, you know, a man in a spacesuit. And then we see it. Is that a spaceship? What is going on here? What possibly could have happened to cause this? Something weird is definitely going on here. We make our way onto the spaceship and we even see something weirder than that. Obviously we make our way to the cockpit and we see a weird gold man that looks like C-3PO just sat there. We take this out of his hands and we're not too sure what it is. But we decide to take his armour off him and with that his body just sort of crumbles now we have ancient armor hoping that this is actually going to help us out in some way we decide to carry on through the rest of the dungeon and hopefully find a way out so far we've run into potentially aliens as well as mutants cannibals devils what else are we going to find on this island things are getting very very weird we still had more to find we have to swim through to potentially find a way out this was a long process as there was a lot of stuff to do, but lucky enough, we're smart now, we know what weapons work best against what enemy, and we find a few of these and we know we've got to pull a cross out so we can burn them. But we're still not near the end, we're still having to trail even further, but again we find another one of these pieces, still unsure what they are, maybe they all click together and make a, you know, a key to find a way out, we are just unsure at this point. But we find a way out of this cave and we come out and we are feeling good. But and again, it gets late, it gets dark, we need to build a quick shelter to sleep the night away. So we lay one down, eat, drink and sleep just so it's the next day. Day 94 and the snow is back. It's freezing, it's cold and we're unsure where we are. We decided it would be a good idea to get some high ground so we can potentially glide off the mountain and find where we are and hopefully find where we need to go next. So we get to the high point, try and jump off and somehow fuck it up. But this time we were able to do it and we're actually able to glide quite a good distance. Obviously we pull out our map to see where we are and we do see where we need to go. We do need to go to the entertainment bunker because that door that we couldn't open in the beginning, we can open now with the key card that we've got. So we glide our way over there and make our way to the entrance. As we're gliding, it gives us a bit of time to have a look around and actually realise we're in such a beautiful place. But still, as we keep saying, it's also filled with a bunch of horrors. But anyway, we're back into this bunker and we make our way to the door and we use the key card that we need and we get through. This appears to be some sort of strange gym area, but nonetheless, we make our way through and we're ready to fight whatever comes and tries to attack us. And obviously, we're dealing with mutants, devils, everything and anything really. But also, the hardest part is to try and loot whilst fighting, because, you know, the loot is the priority. No matter what game you play in, no matter what you're doing in life, focus on loot. We make quite easy work of a lot of these. Like I said, four shots on them, they're dead. So when you run into these, easy work now. 
Then we pull out the shotgun to take this one's head off. We work our way upstairs and we find a guitar and with that guitar we play a nice little song. And then we discover that we can smash it over the heads of our enemies, like someone's done with this one and rammed it down his throat. Then we find some weird vinyl song. I don't know why we've got an album, but it is what it is before we find another note. And as we can see, it's actually Mr. Puffton that decided that all communication should be printed out. But then we do actually find a map to this whole place. I mean, that would have been very useful in the beginning. I feel like we came to this place rather late. We should have been here quite early in the beginning. But either way, we find the guest key card and we carry on making our way through this place. We actually find another room. Again, it gives us a location of something that we need to find. But of course, we find a pointless note that doesn't really mean too much to us. I don't know what a soft opening is, but it's something. But maintenance bunker B, we've now got the location of that if we ever do need to go in there. We carry on grabbing all the loot that we find because, like I said, we are loot goblins. It's just what we do. But we open up this door and, of course, we're greeted by some of our favourite people, our loyal employees. They're a part of the Get Murdered Corporation. We again make easy work of them before going even further. Of course, we're finding weird notes. We don't have a clue what any of this means, but there's some weird countdown going on. We don't understand any of that. But again, we're finding something new. We're now finding an electric chainsaw. This is cool. I could have used this a long, long time ago. It would have made chopping down trees so much easier. And then when we walked down the next corridor, we actually found a person, a real life person. It's not safe here. You're running out of time. It's gonna happen again. You have to leave. And he told us, obviously, we have to leave. But little does he know, we're on his side and we can work together and get this done. He's obviously the man that we've been reading the notes about. The person with the mutant arm. What is going on? Why is he here? What is his goal? Hopefully, we can work together to figure out what is going on. But anyway, we find a way out of this cave. So we jump down and we make for the exit because we just need to get out of here. We've had enough. But obviously... As usual, once we get out of this cave, it is night time, it is dark, and we just need to sleep and chill. It's never daytime when we leave, which is right annoying. Day 95 starts, and we're back out on the golf cart. Obviously, we've got some new locations to visit, and we are feeling like we are so close to being able to solve this mystery. But before we do that, we've got another helicopter that is just flying above. And again, we find another camp abandoned no one's alive and there's nothing there and again the people just ignore us but as usual there's some paperwork that sort of gives us an idea on some stuff but again i don't really understand a lot of it but we grab what we can before digging up the next maintenance bunker for some reason they all seem to be buried but lucky enough for us we found the shovel and we're able to get this open and make our way into maintenance bunker b again this one looks like it's not been open for a long time as well but I say that every time I go in there, there is fresh bodies. So we make our way in with this one. And to be fair, this one didn't have much in. I was expecting a lot more, but it just seemed to be another one of these rooms, pretty much identical to the last one, with just the same amount of loot, but a different location. This time, the laptop gave us the location of maintenance bunker C. So with that, we found a silencer that we could put onto our pistol, meaning that now we could be a bit more sneaky. I ain't gonna lie it wasn't really worth it because you know we want to go in there loud we want to cause confusion but we also find the compound bow later that night we find another camp and in this one we find some night vision goggles and i mean where were these on day one we could have used these a long time ago i would have been able to see everyone but we were tired it was late and we decided to sleep here but of course you know the next day we had a helicopter right there we're trying to run to it and it goes yeah, there's no one flying it, but that's just this island for you. This island's weird, and there's people that don't fly helicopters flying them. Anyway, day 96, we decided to hop on the glider again, and now we're heading back to the accommodation bunker. We want to be able to get in there this time. We glide our way over and try and land as close as possible. Once we arrive there, obviously we've been here before, and there's another helicopter flying about, but we just ignore all that, and we make our way in. This time, we want to know what is going on inside because this time we can finally open up that door and see what is going on. Once we scan the key card, it lets us in. It's a little bit annoying that we could have been here multiple days before, but you know what, we're finally here, and we're finally able to see what's going on inside.
Little Milton Tim, all grown up. As we saw from that, things are getting weird. They're calling Timmy a mutant. Who is that man? He's the one from the beginning that said we weren't welcome there. Was he the one that shot down a helicopter? Is he the reason that we were stranded on here without our team? I don't know. But either way, we're going to figure it out. And we're going to find out what is going on. But all we know so far that Timmy and his dad seem to be the only people on this island that will try and help us. But as you can see, we found another golf club as, as well as some golf balls. But obviously, we had to quickly try out the silence pistol before we could carry on. As always, we have a bunch of these naked, hairless things attacking us, but we make light work of it. And again, you know, we've got these weird finger face things. We're just not even bothered at this point. We're so past these. We're just finding a bunch of paperwork that's telling us about all these weird dreams people are having and this golden city, and we're just unsure what any of it means. But then we stumble across the katana. This is a good weapon. We didn't really use it too much, as I kept forgetting I had it, but still, it was a good weapon once I used it. As you can see, I felt like an actual samurai at this point. But we carried on going even further. We needed to still figure out what is going on. This bunker definitely gave us some valuable information, and we even found a spacesuit, meaning now that we could wear one, and then we found the location of the luxury bunker. We carried going on even further to what seemed to be like a security room, and on the screens we could see Timmy waiting by a locked door, and when we unlocked it, he was able to get through. So maybe you realised we could start working together and we can help each other out. Then we found the email that Ed Pufton sent, saying that he should invite us to the island. Part of me wishes that email was never sent, but at the same time, someone needs to figure out what happened to him and what happened on this island. People need to know what happened to the Pufton family. They can't just disappear without a trace and people not know the story. So I'm determined to find out and let the people know. After we dealt with this enemy, we actually found a body with a gold mask on. We weren't too sure what the gold mask was for, but again, it was just something that we didn't really use. And then we found another video of the cultists. In this video, it seems to be them showing how good the island is whilst doing weird rituals and then ultimately taking their own lives. It was a strange video to watch, but also kind of interesting to see some sort of backstory to them. But as always, once the video finished and once we saw the tragic fate of the cultists, we decided to leave that room and carry on even further. But my question from that video is, who recorded that and why? Anyway, we opened up the next door and made our way through this cave system. Lucky enough, this was pretty much another way out. But we got what we needed from that bunker and now our next task was to head towards the VIP one. We needed to know what was going on and if that was a final location of where the rest of the Pufton family was and if that would give us the answer that we are looking for. We slept the night away and the next morning we're back out on the glider heading towards the VIP bunker. It was wet, it was cold, it was dark, but we were filled with the warmth of determination to get to this bunker and find out what has happened. We could see there was a couple of docks just off the beach so we decided to land there and investigate what's happened there before we made our way into the bunker. We found some paperwork showing that a lot of people have been worried about their husbands that have came to this island and never returned. Clearly nobody knew the full story of what was happening here and it was our job to find out and let people know what has happened and what was the fate of this island. Anyway, we made our way into this bunker and we made our way downstairs. We obviously wanted to see if we could find where Mr. Puffton's daughter was because we've seen no sign of her just yet. But anyway, we made our way through. We grabbed what loot we could find just in case there was anything we needed just before we got into this bunker. But lucky enough, there was no enemies at this point. It was quite quiet, which was strange to us. Usually by now, we're hearing some mad noises and we're being attacked. As we can see, there's a lot of blood. Something definitely has happened here. Then this is where we found Mr. Pufton's daughter's room. Clearly, something hadn't gone well here. We found a letter saying, blow yourself up in the daughter's room. Clearly, that is what happened to her. Then we even found the will of Edward Pufton. What a strange thing to find in the daughter's room. But as we progressed further, we found dead cultists and notes all over. We even then found a diagram saying the gold city, the god will heal us all, and a strange looking man dead on the floor. Clearly the cultists believed there was something in here. 
as we kept exploring we saw this was a really nice place and it would be nice to be there but anyway we found another video and this was of the estate agent trying to sell this place and this actually showed us what happened and what the cultists did this video is evidence that we need Clearly, the cultists have blown themselves up. But anyway, we made our way through the bathroom and found a blueprint on a body as well as a golden door. And Timmy was there waiting for us. And we needed to find a way into there. So we put on our gold armor, hoping that it would work. But lucky enough, I had a member in chat tell me that the blueprint I just picked up is what you need to build and charge up the armor so you can open up the door. So we went and did that. It didn't take us too long, but all we had to do was place down a few batteries, place down the armour as well as a bunch of the ore so we could actually charge it up and get it hit with lightning. With that it would charge up the armour and then make it so we could actually open up the gold door and make our way through. This is hopefully what was going to lead us to a way off this island. But as you can see, the armour got charged and lightning started, we were very close to it. This also called through a bunch of different demons and weird mutants that we did not need to deal with. So we fought back the ones that we could and waited until our armour was charged before we could grab it and run our way in. We didn't have the time or resources to deal with all of them, but we made it back to the gold door and we were finally able to open it with Timmy. We felt like we were getting closer, finally, to an answer. Timmy told us to follow him and he led the way. We ended up running through the caves and ending up in front of a bunch of these demons and we made sure to pull out our cross and make light work of these. At this point we were certified demon killers. I mean we knew exactly what we were doing. Quite easy. The power of Christ compels you and they were weak. I definitely felt like I had the power of God and anime on my side at this point. I mean me and Timmy were a force to be reckoned with. We made our way through burning alive these weird demons whilst running past lava and picking up random notes definitely felt like Timmy knew exactly what he was doing at this point and I was just confused so I let him lead the way whilst he's shooting these weird demons with his pistol looking cool like a cowboy but either way we carried on making our way through dealing with more and more of these at this point we must have killed close to 50 of these weird demons before we got to the end they kept just running towards us straight to their deaths like don't get me wrong they've got like a cool scorpion attack with the back legs but I mean that ain't quite good, all you gotta do is kick their arm out and they're dead. That's it, they're done in. But at this point we were feeling confident. That was until we ran in to this thing. What the hell is that? This thing was not easy to deal with. I mean, Timmy couldn't deal with it, he was getting done in, and my cross was doing nothing to it. So what we had to do was pull out the big boys. Even though the cross wasn't working, we decided it might be worth pulling out the shotgun and trying to shoot it down and that worked no better. Clearly this thing was strong and no matter what we had we couldn't really put a dent with it. So what we had to do was just wear it down over and over again until finally it would just die. At this point Timmy was thrown down some corridor and he was dealing with problems on his own. We were too busy trying to deal with this big fucker and he ran off. I mean talk about leaving a man behind. But anyway finally we pulled out the pistol we ran out and we were very close. One shot and this thing was done. We had finally killed it and we felt even closer to getting off this island. So we skinned it up, took what we needed and made our way towards Timmy to see what was going on. And something told me we were fueling up for a very, very big fight. Because at this point, when we went through, there was so much ammunition and so much stuff free to us, ready to just mess things up. Someone clearly knew that something big was going to happen and you know it wasn't going to be a walk in the park. But either way we made our way through, we grabbed everything we needed and we made our way out of this cave ready to face whatever was waiting for us. But that was not the case. I grabbed everything ready for a big fight but when we made our way through we'd actually found the gold cube that all these cultists was talking about. It was here all along and it was real. All this time we thought it was fake. All the messages pointed towards it could be fake, but it turns out it was real, and lucky enough Kelvin managed to make his way in last minute. That's good because he's our boy, we always want him there with us. Anyway, the device went off and something happened to Timmy, we weren't too sure, then we started seeing these weird spirits coming out of his body and our own. At this point we weren't too sure what was happening, but something weird was going on. 
Maybe this is why those aliens, cultists, you know, mutants and demons all in the same place. Is this the golden city that everyone spoke about? Either way, we could not explain what we saw. I don't know what this meant for us. But I think we finally found what drove a lot of people crazy on this island. But now, we were all okay. Except for Timmy. Timmy was upset. I think he was expecting his arm to be better. But no, he was still a mutant and he was still with one weird arm. Lucky enough for us, we were okay. Day 100, we're finally here. The helicopters are coming. We've got everything we needed. Me and Timmy and Kelvin are leaving. Or so we thought. This big, creepy thing came out and tried to kill us. Things were not going well. I mean, look at it. How are we going to deal with that? We were going to have to use everything and anything we've got to try and kill this thing. And as we saw, this was the person that had been following us, but also shot down our helicopter and told us that we were not welcome on this island. Either way, we had a fight on our hands and we pulled out all our weapons trying to defeat this big mutant creature. No matter what we did, nothing felt strong enough to defeat him. All our weapons felt like they were just bouncing off him. Either way, we carried on. We did not slow down. We threw explosives, but they ended up exploding on us. Things were not going well at this point, but we were near the end. We were so close to killing him, and we felt like we could finally say we had done it. We were almost ready to leave this island. We had been through so much. Me, Kelvin, even the three-legged woman who had been there following us and dancing for us. We'd been through so much at this point. We were the only surviving members of our team, but also we were able to discover what had happened to the Puffton family. Things had not gone well. We had spent a hundred days on this island and we had survived. But not only have we survived, we'd flourished. We'd taken over this island and we had made it our bitch. We fought with mutants, cannibals, and we've done everything we've needed to. But we were finally able to kill this big fucker and call it a day. We are now finally ready to get on this helicopter and get off this island once and for all. So I've been the Great Dane, and this has been 100 days in the forest for 1.0 update. Okay. If you have enjoyed, please oh make God, sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. They're getting closer, we have to leave. Quick, get in. What is that? Don't go near it. Don't touch it. It wants you to stay. Don't listen to it. getting worse. Look at me. Look at what I'm turning into. I need your help. I've told you I can't help you. And what about witness? 